by Catherine Coffin were North Carolina Quakers who did not believe in slavery because of their uh, strong Quaker beliefs, uh, but were living in a slavery state, seeing the horrors of slavery firsthand. And they decided uh, to move with hundreds of other Quakers in 1826 here to Indiana because, of course, slavery was not uh, allowed here. They arrived when the name of our town was Newport. The name was not changed to Fountain City until the 1870s. They opened up a general store down the street. Uh, we're not sure where they lived originally, but we think about her behind the store. Uh, eventually the store expanded across the street, and eventually they had this house built in 1839. They said even though the entire community was primarily settled by other Quakers who didn't live in slavery any more than they did, that little was being done to help the runaway slaves that were coming through this area as they escaped from their slave owners and trying to reach safety and freedom in Canada. They started assisting the runaway slaves in any way they could. In the 20 years, almost 21 years, that they lived in our town, Levi says that they were able to assist about 100 per year. And so that makes the total of, of approximately 2,000 of the freedom seekers they were able to assist and to Levi's knowledge, none were recaptured. They had this house built in 1839 for their family that consisted of six children. Levi's mother was at that time living with them, but they only lived in this house then eight years when friends persuaded them to move to Cincinnati. They started a free labor warehouse, a store that would uh, uh, send items not made by slaves to little general stores like Levi had here in Newport, because the people like Levi felt if they didn't believe in slavery, they shouldn't buy and sell the products of slavery, like cotton and sugar and rice and tobacco. They expected to move back here, so they kept ownership of this house for about 20 years, but never returned. They continued to assist hundreds of runaway slaves crossing at Cincinnati in those years just before and during the Civil War. Shortly before he died, he wrote the book Reminiscences of Levi Coffin, and it's his own book that provides most of the stories and the information and so on that we have about the work of Levi and Catherine Coffin. He died in 1877. He and Catherine are buried in Spring Grove Cemetery in Cincinnati. The Freedom Walk actually was a fundraiser for us to restore the house after the state purchased it in 1967 and we began the restoration. But what a lot of people did was put the name of their ancestors, uh, people who had come uh, with Levi Coffin from North Carolina. Uh, we have descendants of some of the runaway slaves. We have uh, descendants of those early Quakers. We have people who lived in this house down through the years while it was privately owned. So every uh, stone has a connection some way uh, to the story of the house. Then next door, we are in the process of building our visitor center. Uh, the new building is going to look like the building that was there uh, when the coffins live next door here. Uh, on the lower level, it will have an auditorium, and we already have uh, filmed a video, introductory video people will see with a reenactment of the runaway slaves arriving here. Uh, the main floor will be a gift shop and just the um, general uh, area when, when people arrive. And the second floor will be all additional exhibit space. Um, so again, the outside of the building will look like the building that was there when the coffins lived right next door. We hope for the building, the visitor center, interpretive center, to be open at the end of 2016. It is one of the bicentennial legacy projects uh, to help celebrate the 200th birthday, uh, the bicentennial of Indiana in 2016.